Okay, so let's talk about polynomials. The polynomials that you saw in high school had integer or rational or real coefficients. And you add them by adding terms of like powers. So for instance here, p of x has an x cubed term, no x squared term, an x term, and a constant term. Whereas q of x has an x squared term, an x term, and a constant term. So when you add these two, you will group the terms, the cube terms, which, of which there's only one, and that's the first. Then you find this, the x squared terms, of which there's only one, and you place that second. Then you group the x terms, there are two, and then the constant terms, and you group those together. Then you add up terms of like powers of x and get the final result. All right. So that's pretty much the process that you use to add polynomials. Multiplication is a little more complicated. Let's build up from simple cases. Here's a case of a monomial. Monomial means there's only one power of x involved. Here's another monomial. Multiply the two monomials together. You use the commutative law, which says that the, the x's all go to the right. And here you form the coefficient with, from the coefficients of the two individual monomials. So I should put commutative law in quotes because you're, this x is something like a placeholder. You're just combining the two placeholders and combining the coefficients. All right, so we've multiplied two monomials together. Let's consider the case where we have a polynomial consisting of two monomials multiplying another monomial. So if we do that, we're going to use the distributive law. Okay, so by definition, polynomials obey the distributive law. So here we have the sum of two terms times a single term. If we distribute, we get the products of monomials. Then we multiply these by the rule that we saw previously. Group the coefficients and group the powers of x. All right, and here is our result. Now, if we multiply two polynomials that are not monomials, I think you're familiar from this with quadratic equations. We will distribute from the left the, uh, the uh, 5x cubed here and the 2x here. And then you distribute from the right. And then you gather terms of like powers, and you have your final result. And this goes for even larger polynomials. Distribute from the left, distribute from the right, group terms of like powers. Now, you could distribute from the right first, if you like. It turns out it doesn't matter. All right, so here are two types of polynomials that are familiar. A set of integer coefficient polynomials, polynomials with integer coefficients. And here we have polynomials with real valued coefficients. We could also take polynomials whose coefficients were in the natural numbers, the rational numbers, the complex numbers, and so on. Okay, so there are lots of options for the coefficients that you use for polynomials. You can even define zn of x, where zn is the integers mod n. Okay, so if we wanted two polynomials in z4, we would write them this way. Notice that all the coefficients are from the set 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. But this time when we do arithmetic on the coefficients, we'll use the arithmetic of z4, which we've been denoted as circle plus and circle times. All right, so to add these two polynomials in z4, well, here's an x cubed term, here's an x cubed term. We need to add 
terms of like powers using the coefficient arithmetic. So I'm going to use circle plus to add these coefficients together. As far as x squared, there's no x squared up here. There's an x squared here. That's why it's written 0 circle plus 3. Then the terms that involve x to the first power, 3 circle plus 2. And for the constant terms, 1 circle plus 2. Now we have to use uh, mod 4 arithmetic on these. This gives you 0, this gives you 3, this gives you 1, and this gives you 3. Now for multiplication, we will do the same thing we did before. We can multiply and distribute. Now another way of doing the multiplication is simply to identify all of the terms that correspond to each power. For instance, here I have x cubed and an x cubed term. If I multiply these two together, I'm going to get a 1, 1 here, 3 here, and the power is x to the 6th. But I use the modular multiplication on the coefficients. Okay, so that's the only term with x to the 6th. How about x to the 5th terms? Well, there's 1 here, and there's 1 here. No, that's it. There's just 1. The x cubed here and the x squared here. So that's 1 circle dot 3 times x squared. Let's get rid of some of this garbage so we can see what we're doing. All right. Now, for the x fourth, x to the fourth term, we have x cubed here and x there, or we have x here and x cubed here. Those are the only two possibilities. All right. So that's where we get 1 circle plus 2 from this product and 3 circle plus 3 from this product. And continuing down the line, you'll find that all these coefficients are explained in the same way. Once you do the modular arithmetic on the coefficients, then you end up with a polynomial that's also in Z4. Okay. Now this is Z4. It turns out that Z2 is very practical. And in a later chapter on uh, polynomial codes, you'll find we use this quite a bit. Now, in the early part of the book, we talked a lot about groups. And here we have a set of polynomials, various sets of polynomials with integer coefficients or polynomials with real coefficients. Now, you might ask, are these sets groups? Furthermore, we have two operations. We have addition and multiplication. And uh, you can ask which ones are groups under addition, which ones are groups under multiplication. So this is for you to figure out. Okay, remember the axioms of a group and apply those and see which ones of these are groups. Okay, here's some more sums and products to practice with coefficients in modular arithmetic. Okay, so that's our little introduction to polynomial arithmetic. And we'll move on in the next section, in the next video.